Hey guys, a little bit of true crime news here. There's a show out that you probably would want to see. It is called The Butchers of the Bayou on A&E. And it is a documentary on the Baton Rouge, Louisiana serial killers. There were 60 unsolved murders in Baton Rouge. In a swamp, all you have is a dump site. It's a nightmare. An arrest warrant has been issued. It was over. And then it has happened again. The second killer was perverted and very frightening. Made Derek Todd Lee's murders look like child's play. It was a terrifying place to live. He's showering with this dead person holding them. Does God forgive somebody that bad? Which is the Bayou Two Night event premieres Thursday, March 16th at 9, only on A and E. I haven't had a chance to watch the show yet, but I have had a lot of interaction with a lot of serial killers from Louisiana and specifically Baton Rouge. From 1993 to 2004, there was a rash of serial murders happening in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 15 plus women were killed, many were raped, attacked, and eventually they found out through their detective work and their investigation that there were actually three active killers at one time operating in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You're watching WAFB 9 News at 10. Good evening, I'm Julie Baxter. Thank you for joining us this evening. Well, it was a very personal expression today as again, families of the serial killer's victims gathered on the steps of the state capitol to remind the South Louisiana. Ann Pace released balloons at today's Justice for All rally in memory of her daughter, Murray Pace. May 31st will mark the one year anniversary of Murray's brutal murder. And for the first time, the parents of the most recent victim of the serial killer, Carrie Lynn Yoder, attended the monthly rally. Dave Yoder says he drove 10 hours from Tampa to speak to this crowd. But as WAP's Avery Davidson tells us, it wasn't what the family said, but what you saw there at the Capitol today that was the most powerful reminder of how many families are still struggling with unsolved murders. So the first guy they arrested, his name is Derek Todd Lee. Derek Todd Lee is an African-American male. He is responsible for seven murders. Uh, vicious killer, rapist, lust killer. He eventually died of cancer, a heart attack in 2016. So Derek Todd Lee killed seven and he is deceased. The second guy, white male, that they arrested, Sean Vincent Gillis, responsible for eight murders. I'm sorry I hurt people. Mm -hmm. Today, not to be the premature corpses of tomorrow. You let me out on the street, I'll find somebody before Sunday. When you say hi, uh, I was strictly going out looking for a victim. Even beat to death looks better than that photo you've got over right there. White nylon tie lock. I mean, we're talking two and a half feet long at least. Can make Maybe five feet. feet. Yeah. Make a loop and you've got a few inches of spare. And uh, flip it on her head. Too bad, you know. Yeah. Do you remember her paying anything to you during this fight? Like, uh, there wasn't a lot of no more, you know, why you're doing this. And, and I really didn't have an answer for her other than, you know, I'm killing you, you know. Pretty much brought her, brought her back home from there to my house. But I held her up, bathed her, held her to me, you know. Bathed her so far and stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were taking the shower, you know. She painted her nails, fly her hair. I think I did, so. She had beautiful legs. One thing that I recalled about her. And I wanted to keep those long legs, huh? But I like a good set of gowns, you know, a good set of legs. And looking at it, just the curvature of it. Beautiful. <clears throat> good. You know, withstand, notwithstanding, it was cut off of a person. At that point, I pretty much moved on to the head. Okay. And that night, it went through, it went through the throat. Like that. And his, he was a, a gruesome killer. Uh, rape, torture, decapitation, dismemberment, uh, possibly uh, sex with his victims after they were deceased. Sean Vincent Gillis is still housed in a prison in Louisiana, but he has yet to respond to my inquiries. A third serial killer that was arrested, he's really not a, convicted of a serial murder. He's convicted of a, an assault and a rape, and he just got tied to one murder, but we think he's killed more. His name is Jeffrey Lee Guillory, and he was operating at the same time as Derek Todd Lee and Sean Vincent Gillis. So the show is called The Butchers of the Bayou on A&E, 
It's about the serial killer decade or couple decades they had in Baton Rouge, Louisiana from 1993 to 2004, I should say 11 years um, of, their, of this big murder spree. And they actually found out there were three active serial killers. They don't have very creative names for serial killers in Louisiana, I guess. So Derek Todd Lee was called the Baton Rouge serial killer. Not very creative. Sean Vincent Gillis was called the other Baton Rouge serial killer. And Jeffrey Lee Guillory didn't get a nickname. So there you go. The serial killer show Butchers of the Bayou and A&E and the rash of serial killings in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This was about a year after the last homicide in 2009. There were large billboards on I-10 featuring the faces of the eight women. What is this? This is fascinating and strange. These women's faces are on billboards along with billboards for casinos and hunting shops and gas stations. And suddenly here are eight dead women in the middle of all of this. The Jeff Davis Eight refers to eight women. All eight of the women were from the south side of the tracks. There's that cliche, you're from the other side of the tracks. This is literally the cliche come to life. They were working poor. They struggled with all kinds of things from mental illness to substance abuse disorder and really like the day-to-day -day grind of being working poor. You know, how do I get enough money to eat? Where do I live? Like all of these like really deep struggles. They were also sex workers who ran in the same circles and got high with the same people, including pimps, criminals, and law enforcement officers, according to interviews Brown conducted for his book. These women are struggling. They, however, have large families. They have partners, husbands, kids, sometimes multiple kids, and they are loved in their small community. They are loved by their families. Victim number seven, Brittany Gary, she was 17 years old. She was killed. Her death occurs in November of 2008. Her mother is just force of nature kind of personality. My child is alive out there somewhere. <laughs> I know this. Her mother was involved in putting together a search party for her. Her mother was deeply involved in doing a ton of media at the time in 2008. I made a promise that I would find her and I would not stop until I did and I'm not going to stop. Her mother and her mother's pushing results in the creation of a multi-agency task force which is created in the late fall of 2008, very soon after Brittany's murder.